In this video we'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses of different database paradigms. Using the wrong kind of storage for your data can lead to disaster. You might remember that in 2020, Public Health England was using Excel spreadsheets to store track and trace information. At some point in the process, they converted a CSV file into an XLS file, which is an old Excel file format from 1987, in order to load that CSV into Excel. The old file format can only handle 65,000 rows, which is suspiciously close to a power of 2 by the way. This meant that anything more than 65,000 dropped off the end and so a lot of valuable data was lost. Public Health England are not unique. A common issue as companies scale up is that processes, which were fine for a small company, like adding purchases to a spreadsheet by hand, become a nightmare when the volume of data grows. Excel does not lend itself well to automation and for managing data at scale. For that we have to turn to more secure and more robust systems. For much of the last 40 years, relational databases, and in particular SQL databases, have dominated the data storage market, especially in industry. This is still the case, with SQL-based technologies making up about 60% of the database systems in current use. Breaking that down a bit, we see about three and a half dominant technologies. MySQL, which we're all familiar with, very similar to SQLite. MongoDB, which is the most popular NoSQL database solution. Then there's PostgreSQL, which for our purposes is just another type of relational database management system and query language. Finally, there's Redis at about 8%, an example of a key value database. Despite the many new database solutions, SQL and relational databases in general remain extremely popular, and there are many reasons for this. The first is the fact that in the 40 or more years since its introduction, SQL has been used around the world for all kinds of extremely crucial data storage tasks. This long history is evidence of SQL's usefulness and also means there's likely to be some book or article that can tell you how to make it work for your problem. There are also lots of developers around the world who know how to use SQL, which is another major advantage. Underlying SQL is a mathematical framework called relational algebra that provides guarantees about the safety and consistency of operations. For crucial systems, think a hospital database or a bank, these mathematical guarantees are essential so that we always know what's happening with our data. This is somewhat subjective, but most programmers agree that SQL syntax is quite natural and simple to learn. This feature of SQL is likely how it became so popular. Think back to the 80s and doing database management and data analysis using something like C or Fortran or even COBOL. In that context, the simplicity of SQL really stands out, and new developments in the language typically maintain that simplicity while extending its functionality. Going back to robustness, SQL is implemented in a way that guarantees a set of properties called the ACID requirements. These are requirements of database transactions, so updates, making and dropping tables and so forth, that are intended to guarantee data validity in the face of disasters, for example power failures or system crashes. The first ACID requirement is atomicity. We often have database operations that are composed of multiple parts. Think of a bank transaction. You want to withdraw money from your account and put it in another account. Imagine if that transaction failed after the first step, but left the database partially updated. Atomicity guarantees that this can't happen, a transaction either occurs completely or not at all. The next requirement is consistency. This is a guarantee that a database transaction can change the tables in some unpredictable way. For example, it's common to impose what are called foreign key constraints. This means the values in one column have to be taken from the keys in some other table. For example, in a school database, students can only be enrolled on valid courses, so the course ID in the student table might be constrained to only take values from the course table. Consistency ensures that rules like these aren't broken when inserting or deleting rows. The third is isolation. Imagine multiple people reading and writing from the same table. Clearly there's some potential for disaster if they issue overlapping commands. One person writes something as another reads it, for example. Isolation is a guarantee that the concurrent execution of transactions leaves the database in the same state that would have been obtained if those transactions had been executed sequentially. Finally, durability means that once a transaction has been committed, the data is permanently updated. This means that even if there's a system crash or power outage, the transaction's effects are committed. Basically, it means you can't store SQL tables in RAM. Relational databases are very good at achieving these requirements, but there are some things they do not do well. Relational databases require defining a schema. We need to know the columns in the table and how they all link together, which we could do by defining something like the entity relationship diagram. If we know in advance the kind of data we're going to be dealing with, this is fine, but often we have data coming in that may be all kinds of different shapes, which may not fit into a simple schema. In the coursework, you'll be working with tweets. Tweets can contain a variety of fields, like place information, images, links, and even other tweets, which come from quotes and retweets. This type of data is very hard to design a schema for. SQL also struggles with scaling. Scaling means that we can make our database operations go faster by increasing compute power. Relational database operations, because of the ACID requirements, almost all happen on a single CPU or have a single CPU bottleneck. So making that CPU faster speeds them up. This is called vertical scaling. What is much more difficult to do with relational databases is to distribute work across many processors, called horizontal scaling. 
This is where distributed databases really outperform relational ones and is one of the main reasons for their popularity in the era of big data. For distributed data, there's an important idea called the CAP theorem or Brewer's conjecture, which is similar in spirit to the ACID requirements for relational databases. This states that in any distributed data store, you can simultaneously have the features of consistency, accuracy, and partition tolerance. You can only have two. Consistency means that every read sees the most recent write or an error. This is the part that ACID databases are good at. For example, in an online shop with only one item left in stock, only one customer can buy it. Any other customer must either see that the shop is out of stock or receive some sort of error message. Availability means that every request receives a response and not an error. Partition tolerance means that the system will continue to operate even if different nodes in the distributed network can't communicate with each other. In fact, no network can be guaranteed to stay up, so for a distributed system, the real choice is between consistency and availability. The most popular NoSQL database systems, MongoDB and Redis, abandon availability to ensure consistency and partition tolerance, so we might call these CP databases. The React database system, or peer-to-peer -peer networks, are what we might call AP systems, which sacrifice consistency for constant availability. Finally, a CA system can't really be distributed. In that case, we're back with relational databases and SQL. Modern distributed databases usually adopt the base paradigm, where the hard requirements of consistency and availability are dropped for the looser requirements of eventual consistency and basic availability. This means database systems won't always remain consistent, but at some point a process will occur which will balance the books. Likewise, availability isn't guaranteed, but the database can be made highly fault tolerant, so that dropping availability is very unlikely. Adopting these constraints allows for the efficient horizontal scaling of distributed databases.